after I became an adult, I just went through this phase of just buying shit here and there, stuff that I don't really need just to so-called prove my worth because that is how I treated material objects. But you know, now at this point of my life, I do own a lot of the things that used to only exist in my dream. Like for example, I used to have this dream of owning an Hermes Birkin. You know, after I owned it and also for my house too, this is my dream home that I'm living in, I was able to do that at 25 and I now have a lot of the things that I used to just dream about and now I have a different focus. I want to focus more on my well-being, my mental health, and I want to focus less on the material things because guess what? Material things, they come and go. You don't own anything forever. Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage Podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. I am going on another mini retirement and I've made this decision last year when I was really burnt out around the June timeframe and I just decided that, you know what, I am going to stop pushing myself. I retired early from corporate at 25 years old and the reason why I did that is because I did not want to go through another round of interviewing and recruiting or I guess on the other side of recruiting and pretending that I have so much faith in the system and that I really want to move for the corporate ladder and that I see my future in you know the c-suite corporate roles which I don't, so I just wanted to stop lying to myself, I wanted to stop lying to people, and I just prioritized my own well-being, my own mental health, and so I'm using that same way of thinking, I'm using that same perspective on my business. There's, there's no reason that I retired from corporate because of my mental health, but then I still create another fancy cage for myself and still ruin my mental health after I retired from corporate. And it doesn't really matter what I choose to do after I hit my FI number and after I retired from corporate. I just want to really be true to myself and really care about my mental health. And honestly, I feel like I haven't been doing that. It's really sad, but um, I've always been the type of person who prioritizes goals. I've always been very goal oriented, very material driven. And maybe that stems from my upbringing because I've always been told that money is really hard to make and it's very scarce and you can't just buy whatever you want. And so after I became an adult, I just went through this phase of just buying shit here and there, stuff that I don't really need just to so-called prove my worth because that is how I treated material objects. But you know, now at this point of my life, I do own a lot of the things that used to only exist in my dream. Like for example, I used to have this dream of owning an Hermes Birkin, you know, the the legendary handbag, the, the best handbag ever, <laughs> one of the most expensive handbags in the world. And you know, after I owned it and also for my house too, this is my dream home that I'm living in, I really thought I was gonna just rent until I'm like 40, <laughs> until I'm like middle aged. But you know, I was able to do that at 25 and I now have a lot of the things that I used to just dream about. And now I have a different focus. I want to focus more on my well being, my mental health, and I wanna focus less on the material things because guess what? Material things, they come and go. You don't own anything forever. And if you only focus on the future, if you only focus on your goals, you forget to appreciate the now. You, you forget to live in the now. And I feel like I'm slipping into those patterns again, those old patterns of me just focusing so much on the future and focusing so much on certain goals and neglecting my own mental health. And it is time for me to, again, take a mini retirement. And I have not decided what it's going to look like exactly, but I must say that I do feel somewhat burnt out again. 
And a part of me is like almost ashamed of admitting that I'm burnt out because I'm literally living my dream life, the dream life that I dreamt of a couple years ago. This is the exact life that I wrote on my journal. And I'm just going to paraphrase what I wrote. It's along the lines of I am living in a quiet neighborhood. I have all the freedom to create whenever I want. My two cats are at peace with each other. <laughs> they don't fight all that much and they are even sometimes friendly. And just, I guess for a point of reference, when I wrote this, my two cats did not have a good relationship with each other. Like they fight so much. They hiss at each other every single hour. It was just like not a good look, but now they really are friends. And I also wrote that um, I also have a loving partner and we have a really good relationship. We have a healthy relationship and he is my dream man. And so like, as you can kind of tell, a lot of these things have actually come true. But um, maybe that's why I am slightly ashamed that I'm still not happy. Uh, I still don't think my life is perfect and I still feel burnt out even though this is the life that I dreamt of and this is the life that I designed for myself a couple years ago and I think part of it is because I have changed and I have different priorities now. Like in the past maybe it's just I didn't really understand what burnout is <laughs> and I haven't really experienced burnout. And so in my mind, as long as I'm doing something I love, then it should be all rainbows and butterflies. But now that I've experienced burnout a couple of times from corporate and also outside of corporate, I realize that even though you could be doing something that you deeply, deeply love, that is your life purpose, you can still burn out. And when times like that happen, it's important for you to just allow yourself to take a break if you can. And now I have created the privilege for myself to actually take a break and for me to actually go on another mini retirement without thinking about outputting all the time. And I'm still constantly learning. It's not that I stop reading, I stop listening to podcasts, or I stop taking courses. Like even during my many retirements, I still read a lot, but I just focus less on the output. I think in the past, I've been so focused on posting videos consistently and creating YouTube videos every single weekend. It's exhausting. It honestly is. And I'm not the type of person who loves being in a box and to grow on YouTube. I've always been told that it's important for you to niche down, it's important for you to stick to your topic, and it's important for you to just create consistently. And all of these things just don't work well with my brain. And I think a big reason why I feel burnt out again is because of these games that I've been playing that I'm just not enjoying. I don't enjoy sticking to just one thing, and I don't enjoy just you know, staying on topic all the time and basically putting myself in another label, in another box, just like what I did in corporate. And it's just quite exhausting, to be honest. And so I think that is why I am going on another mini retirement. And what it's like, it's that I still do a lot of input. I still learn a lot. And so that's probably why every single time I come out of these mini retirements, I come out with a new perspective. And my content changes and my messaging maybe also changes and my perspective also changes. But an another part of it is, I guess it's kind of like exploration. I'm just exploring different things. And I think in a way it's, it's almost necessary to, to dig deeper and to explore. And I think in the past I've been in the past, what, eight years of running my business, I've been so focused on just outputting, 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 creating videos, writing posts, <laughs> writing captions. And I don't really dig deep enough, I think. It, it's been a recurring feeling. And I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of early retirement. And granted, I do feel like I'm digging deeper, like increasingly deeper. I am talking about money, not just on the monetary sense, not just surface level stuff, but I'm also talking about mental health. I'm also talking about cultural background and upbringing and generational trauma. And sure, these are slightly deeper, but I really do feel like I can go so much deeper. 
And I can't do that by just outputting all the time. I have to also do a lot of inner work. I also have to do a lot of exploring, a lot of digging on my own. And I need a lot of quiet time. I need a lot of solo time. And I need this early retirement. And it's fucking scary. I think this is the first time that I ever announced that I'm going on a mini retirement and I don't exactly know what it looks like. Sometimes I might be, I might be really inspired and I'm just gonna post anyway. And you might be like, wait, hold up. I thought she said she's going on a, an early retirement. Why is she posting? And I think that's just me. Like, I just want to go with the flow more. I don't want to restrict myself anymore. I don't want to push myself to post content if I don't feel like it. And it's just gonna be what it is and I am going to stop judging myself because of it and I just hope that by me being public, being honest, being open about my mini retirement, maybe you can also find some courage in that <laughs> and give yourself permission to rest, give yourself permission to heal, to explore, to dig deeper, to live in the now more. So thank you so much, and I will see you on the other side of my mini retirement or not. So while I'm going on this mini retirement, I also want to give you guys the opportunity to still learn about early retirement while I am technically gone. So I have prepared this anti-webinar rant. Yes, this is after my I guess, spiritual awakening, my multiple soul deaths, and I decided to pull back the curtains and show you exactly what it's like to retire early, how to actually retire early without all the sales pitch fluff. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then you can go to cherrytongue.co forward slash webinar and get access to my anti-webinar rant. And just as an FYI heads up, it is not gonna be like any of the webinars that you watch because I'm actually reacting to my own webinar and putting out some BS lies that I've told just, uh, just because I thought that's the best practice and the best business, whatever technique. So... I am not only going to teach you exactly how to retire early and what steps I took to retire early at 25 years old, I am also going to be pulling back the curtains and showing you exactly what are these scammy webinar tactics that I've been taught that probably you have seen around the industry. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, I will see you in my anti-webinar. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode, tagging me at cherrytongue.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.